Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about probably one of the best blogs that I've ever seen, and Igor here has really done a great job on several blogs, and we're going to be reviewing several of them, and I'll be sharing the links to all of them in the description below so you can check it out. But we're going to talk about some of the things companies do to justify paying programmers less and some things to watch out for, really the red flags. And a lot of these things, it's, it's a bit sad, but many of you who are already software engineers will be able to relate and understand and have seen these red flags if you've learned from sort of your mistakes. And so we're going to talk about that, and let's go ahead and uh, dive into it. It's pretty funny uh, because it's so it's, – it's funny in a sad but true way. Might I take a moment to recommend our long-term sponsor. Long-term, as in we've been working together for almost three years now, which is pretty crazy. And a lot of changes have happened at Dev Mountain. They've changed a couple locations in the past to now they're in the Lehigh area. They're also in Dallas and Phoenix. But if you're interested in considering a coding boot camp, might I recommend devmountain.com. They have programs in full-stack JavaScript, iOS development, QA, UI, UX. You can find out more information at devmountain.com. So uh, the the blog starts off uh, <laughs> like this 1959 Ben Hur picture is just so funny to me. Um, <coughs> but the <coughs> excuse me, I'm dying over here. Um, the this is this introduction paragraph really is how I've felt at one company in particular where you'll find out in your in your career, depending as you go and you work at these small to medium sized companies, that sometimes the people who own them are upset that they have to have software engineers on payroll because we're we probably cost two to two and a half times as much as the other employees a lot of times and they they think you're lazy they think that you are uh expensive and impossible to control because a lot of times the impossible to control is shut up and get done do what i tell you to do i don't care if i don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> um but um and unfortunately, we can't use violence anymore. I, I, I loved everything about this. And so first thing to making sure that you that you don't pay software engineers as much as you got to keep those salaries secret, right? And this is why one of the things that I'm so vocal about, making sure that you discuss your salary. I've talked very openly about my salary, my benefits, all that sort of stuff, because I can. There's nothing legally binding me not to. And what you'll find out is that a lot of companies – and the same company, when I got a significant raise, told me to keep it to myself, basically. Um, they want you to feel like it's a negative thing to talk about money because they, they don't want you to tell your coworker that you just got a 30K raise when he's making 30K less than you for the same job. Um, so you'll, you'll notice that's a sort of a standout. You also notice that raises are sort of random, that they are unpredictable or they don't have any justification and you know i've worked at places where they have said look company policy is three percent we don't care how good you are well that doesn't really give me a lot of incentive to get better now does it <laughs> um where even if you get promoted you're still getting that three percent so um and you'll you'll you know you'll see that that's just company policy you know, let's hide behind company policy <laughs> um so here's the thing about company policy is uh it can always be changed you know why? Because <laughs> there's one person or a group of people deciding those company policies, and they're not written in stone. It's not like, hey, Dylan, company policy is 3%. We wish we could give you a 10, but we can't, because if we did, the um, FBI is going to come up in here with helicopters, shoot up the place, and we all be dead. No, it's we don't want to, and uh, it's a it's an effort to get it to go higher. So, no conferences. Oh my goodness. Oh. Uh, the uh, a co here's a little, little story time. A coworker of mine and this, <laughs> a coworker of mine wanted to go to a conference on a Saturday. Um, we requested that we'd be reimbursed. It was it wasn't that expensive. It was a hundred and twenty five dollars or a hundred dollars, and it was on a Saturday, so it wouldn't be. It's a one day conference, so it wouldn't be like oh we need to take a day off or anything like that. And so we both submitted something to request, like hey would you pay for this conference? It's directly related to our job, and uh, they wouldn't do it. And that was sort of on a side note. I was that was sort of the straw that broke the camel's back, and I filled out um, some apps after that because it's. It's all these things sort of add up where eventually you're just 
Okay. A uh, hundred dollar conference. That's fine. You could say I'm entitled. What if you if you'd like? But um, when I'm going to increase my skills, and uh, I think it's okay for companies to want to support their employees. That's a, that's really what it comes down to for me. Is you? I want a company and the a company that either wants you to continue your education or wants in a traditional or untraditional sense. They want you to get better. You know, that's always something to do. And conferences help you get better, but they also cost a little bit of money, not much. It does I mean some do some like NG Conf? I hear it's a couple grand. That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I can relate to that one. No work from home. Yes, the uh, oh, they're probably just not doing anything, just smoking dope and doing the whatever developers. Do. I don't, I don't know what business people think you're doing, but you got to be in the office. You got to be in the office, and you have to be as uncomfortable as possible so that we can make sure that you're working. So, um, no, no work from home. And a lot of these companies, a lot of these higher stress companies, the, the companies where they've been okay with you working from home have been much more low stress. And it almost gives you a reprieve from the craziness of being a software developer and software engineer in some of these places where, you know, you'll work at places where everything's on fire always. And, it can do two things to you. It can unravel you, and I've I've had it do that to me. Where because you're a professional, you want to put the fires out because you believe at some point in time there will be no fires. You're like, we just gotta get the fires under control, and then a year and a half later, the, everything's on fire, and um, you've um, started prematurely balding. Uh, but uh, no, um, but yeah, it's the the working from home thing is something that I'm very big proponent of um not just because it saves you time and money but i do think getting out of the sort of work environment in the traditional sense in the building um, allows you to get more done because there's less people asking you questions there's less noise and it's just it takes you out of the everything's on fire sort of stuff um which is nice spying on them oh my goodness uh joshua fluke just did a great video about some software companies that um Three, I, and I saw this the other day that there was three hundred million dollars of venture capital investments, of, of into software companies that specifically were there to monitor what your employees were doing. To literally, it kept track of if you were on your email, what email you were sending the software on your phone, what you were doing on your phone, to um, what browser tab that you were on, and um, I, you know, I've had. I've had companies who had done this, but oftentimes um, there's a money cost with recording everything, every action you want. But yeah, um, make a deal with competitors. Yeah, Brain, brainwash them by communicating how great your company is. Another thing that did. Here's a little hot tip that I've learned: the harder a company tries to sell you on their culture, the lower the offer is going to be, and the less of a professional work environment it typically is. Like. And it's, so the the idea here being, and this has just been my personal experience, so this is uh, anecdotal evidence of one, but um, anytime I've ever interviewed with a company, the selling of the culture is always something that they're trying. It's like a salesman doing their job. Now, if you have a good culture and the the selling of the culture is never even stuff like, oh, well, we, it's not tangible stuff a lot of times. Um, you know, it's like, we want to make sure that our employees succeed. We are going to, you know, do this, this, and that. It's never really things like we we encourage to do. We have these policies in place, like tangible things that you can point to. Um, but, yeah, selling of the uh, culture is something that always sort of is funny. Uh, making deals with competitors, making sure that you're not going to headhunt other people. This is something that does happen as well where, um, you know, if you have a major player in town that works alongside the company that you're with, a lot of times there are company policies where they're not going to snipe out. And I work with a, a, a relatively large company that had to do a check to make sure that the my previous employer wasn't a client of theirs because it's against their policy, which is fine, right? You don't want to be sniping around. You don't want to be sniping, like taking people's developers that are your business people because that's a good way to end that business. So that understand a little bit more. Promote corporate values. Yes, the corporate values. Um, and building a family. 
corporate corporate parties, Friday beer, team building events, bowling, use tools to do that. Now, whenever I've I've been at places that have really done a lot of these where you you're gonna have um, you know, you're gonna you know, after hour drinks, which is fine, but um a lot of times, you know, lunches and team nights, that's all great stuff. But at a so at a good company, these are additional things. These are things that a com- a good company will say, "Hey, we're going to we're going to um, you know, we're just gonna give thanks and and try and keep our employees happy, right? We want to give them some free food. Everyone likes free. Um, you know, we're gonna do some team building stuff during business hours. Like so, the companies that are that are great that will do this during they'll do it during business hours. They'll say, "Look, we we want everyone to pers- we want everyone to participate. We want everyone to have fun. So we're gonna do it during business hours." The bad companies, uh, and maybe not bad, but the uh, the companies that have fallen into this, like we feel like we have to do this, uh, we'll do it outside of business hours, so that they because um, they don't really care who goes. They just want to say that they do it, um, and also it's um. It's, it's, it's just a, a second, second forethought. Like it's just something, and, and those companies do it outside of business hours. What you'll find is they'll, they'll start calculating it in to what, um, what people should be like, should be paid and they'll, they'll use that. Um, and so that you'll want, they'll, these are, so instead of these being additions, they become part of your package of benefits, if that makes sense. And so you got to be careful about that. Stressing them. Oh my goodness. Remember how I was talking about everything's on fire all the time? Stressing them is one of the ways that there's there's like this old school mentality. Uh and it, it goes from from having like um just bad upper management where um a lot of times what ends up happening is people think that you just need to scream and yell and stress and stress and stress and they'll things will get done. Sometimes they do. But there's a lot of artificial necessity. Um, here, here's the thing is, uh, and this is this has taken me three years to get to this point. But I don't give a shit about deadlines. You know why? Because they're not real. They're not real. Um, and what I mean by they're not real? Well, ninety nine point nine percent of the time, what I am building does not impact like people li- dying or living. And what I have found out is that. Um, you're saying, well, Dylan, you might lose your job. I wish you would fire me. All right. Like <laughs> I got plenty of side projects I can do. And I promise you that I'm doing a good enough job that you're not even going to, that's not even on the table. All right. So do a good enough job that you ain't worried about it. But what I'm trying to say is this, is that a lot of times with this whole, um, stressing and, you know, artificial deadlines is that my work unless I'm working in maybe healthcare or I'm working in the military does not impact a life or death situation. So these stressing, it's a, this is just people trying to lead by fear. People trying to, um, make people, um, make people maybe make compromises to solve problems in a shitty way. That's going to bite them later that the business doesn't understand. And so you have to protect the code as a professional. Um, yeah, make promises. Oh my goodness. Do you know how many people have um you know, oh, just wait till your one year review or your two year review. We're going to take care of you. Then one year review, two year review comes along and you get that 3% raise. What happened to taking care of me? What, you know, 6 months ago when I said that I had another offer and they were going to pay me 20 grand more and you gave me a $3,000 salary bump. Well, you know, something's changed and, you know, you get the run around. So plenty of plenty of companies will make promises not keep them. Now, a good company, will, it's a good company will meet you halfway before this ever happens, right? If, if I've, if I've had a, a counter offer and I want to go and at that point, if I have a counter offer, I'm probably just going either way. I've stayed for one counter offer, but what I've come to realize, and this is sort of off topic for make promises, is that if you're looking, and I, at that time I was looking, it wasn't like something just plopped in my lap. Like nowadays things just plop in my lap and I answer calls and I say, sure, what do you, what's, what's up? What do you got for me? <laughs> is it really a great opportunity? Um, because plenty of great opportunities come that are much worse than my, than my current place. Cause I'm, I'm taken care of very well. Uh, but 
uh, at that time I was looking and what I found, I ended up leaving six months later because I wasn't looking to leave for money. I was looking because of all the stuff that we're talking about here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, buy them cushion chairs and tennis tables. Instead of giving someone a raise, it's always better to buy a new PlayStation for the office. Yes, 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 yes. And this goes back to the sort of culture, to the, we're fun, we're doing this, we got a ping pong table, we got a, you know, PlayStation there, and um, we got chips. Well, keep your chips, keep your ping pong table, because I got bills, all right? So what about $20,000 more in salary? No, 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 but we got chips and drink in the in the thing, which is great, but uh, doesn't really um, pay the bills. Give them sound titles. Yes, 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 yes. This is one of my favorites. There are, I recently talked with a, a colleague of mine who ha this happened to him where um, – they gave him a new title and a promotion, but that 3% raise because they hate the fact that they have to have developers and they hate, oh, nope, nope, we're going to make you a manager. Here's your 3% raise. Enjoy. Uh, and so uh, a lot of companies will give you titles just to keep you around for six months because a lot of people, once they get those titles, they feel like they have to work in that role for a little bit. Although typically what's happened is you've already been working in that role for a year. So they might say, hey, we're like for me, I could probably be a team lead already. Because that's what I do. I'm 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 mentoring the developers. I am I am um, helping facilitate code standards and things like that. And so, like, if they made me a team lead today, I would just leave my team lead role. That would be my title on my resume. I, and if I wanted to leave, I would. I wouldn't say oh, I need six months experience. Why? Because I've had been doing. I would be have been doing what that role for X amount of months before that. I just didn't have the title. But a lot of times, people feel like they have to stay longer for titles. Help them survive, yeah. Um, yeah, so one thing I've talked about quite diligently, I've been meaning to make a video dedicated to money specifically so that, you know, if we take me as an example, is in 2014 or 2015, I made $12,000. Um, in twenty By the end of 2019, I'll be 150 and at the way things are looking, 2020 will be 170 to 200 depending on how some of these things play out. Um, so you can say my income for this year compared to five years ago has 10, 12 folded. Is that right? 12 times. Yeah. About 144 would be 12 fold. So about 12 and a half times my income growth. Now you can make a lot of bad decisions when you do that. And a lot of people do. I have people who make more money than me, but are, um, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in debt, living paycheck to paycheck. And, um, you know, they can't have this. They are stressed out, not only because of the money aspect, but remember we were over here talking about uh, stress them when you can't afford to when you can't afford to um, pay your bills, and you have to. It's hard to stand up for yourself. So don't fall into that sort of parent to kid uh, model. Train them right. Do not train them to use the latest technologies. Remember how I'm always talking about use the latest stuff. Um, you know. A lot of a lot of companies that the, that's why I avoid legacy tech never in a million years because then you get stuck. Um, I was just talking with a developer the other day who's five years experience doing jQuery in Los Angeles making seventy k and he can't even get an interview because he has zero modern technologies on there and you know your first job fine but you're supposed to if you take a if you take a bad job at, that uses legacy uh, technologies it's up to you to go and make sure you have a different job in six months to a year right. Um, so be a friend. Yeah. Um, we're family, Dylan. We're family. And, uh, <laughs> I've made a lot of good uh, friends. A lot of the friends I made in Florida that I play board games with and talk with regularly. And that I've sort of mentioned here a couple of times. They, uh, they are, um, you know, coworker. They were coworkers at one time. And now we, we hang out outside. So, um, you will make friends at work. Some of them, not always, but, um, not at all. And not at all places I've worked at, Let's see. First place. So yeah, two so out of the three other places I've worked at in Florida, I've made friends at one of them. And the other places I'm friendly, but it's not like we hang out. Um so it's not always gonna happen. But um, you know, you can make friends, but uh just try and remember that it's not a it's why you're working together and if you're friends with your manager like I am. Uh, he's one of my friends now and um, we don't work together anymore. So uh, you have to keep that in mind that 
people will sort of try and play on that. So I really love this article. He, uh, Igor here does a fantastic job, and there'll be a link in the description for you guys to go check it out and to read it and enjoy it and uh, see some of his other stuff. I'll be sharing. I'll be sort of talking a little about some of his stuff. It, it was uh, one of the things I saw this, I started sharing it with everyone. I loved it because some of the things in here you can just relate to on such a a level that like a lot of this stuff, if you've ever worked as a developer, there's stuff that you're going to, it's going to stand out to you. Like maybe you never thought about that. You're like, yeah, that place did suck. And everything in here is true. Or like these five things that are really relatable. And like to me, I read through this and I was just like, it's like, Hey, here's overtime. Hey, here's uh stress, high stress levels. No, we're not going to pay you any more money, but pizza party <laughs> you know, like that. How many times have, have we heard that? Um, so like, I, I just loved it. So with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share all that good stuff. And if you're interested in my latest courses, the 100 front end interview technical uh, question challenge is actually a bestseller in the front end web development category. And you get it for just $9.99 using the, descript the, the link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hey guys, don't forget to hit that notification bell or smash that like button while you're at it. And if you're interested, I just released my latest course, the 100 Front End Technical Question Challenge, which is there to help you pass those front end technical interviews. There's over 100 questions. You can get it for just $9.99. The link is in the description below or use coupon code CODINGGOD.